Hey guys! Today we're going to begin a series of four paintings. This one is going to be a seahorse, and so we're going to focus this summer on painting sea creatures. You're going to need a canvas. I'm going to use an 11 by 14 today, and we're going to use a couple of different colors. So if you don't have these exact colors, there's no problem. You just use your creative expression. I'm going to use some turquoise. I like to use golden paints. They are my favorite. I'm even going to use some red, yellow, and I have out also some orange and green and some other colors as well. I like to have a lot of colors just so that I have everything I could possibly want. I have a little bit of raw umber, which is just a, a dark brown, and then I have some phthalo blue. So I've got a lot of colors. I will also have white and maybe just a little bit of black. So you want to have just a variety of brushes. My style, guys, is very unstructured. So I don't care if I have a lot of nice brushes. I don't care if I have a lot of nice supplies. I feel like everybody can create, um, no matter if they have expensive things or not. So I just have a bunch of a variety of brushes. Some are from kid sets. Some are nicer ones. But for real, you can create with anything. So gather your supplies and we're going to get started. All right, so if you have all your paints ready, we're going to go ahead and get started by painting in the blue water that's going to be behind everything that we paint on top. So you're going to paint from front, from back to front. So I like to use a bigger brush for the bigger background strokes. And so you'll, as you get more comfortable with painting, um, you'll understand that, you know, different brushes work better for different things, but you can use anything you want. So I get my brush wet a little bit because this is going to be, um, we're going to be covering a lot of area and I don't want, I want my paint to spread nicely. So I keep my brush pretty wet for this uh, part of the process. And I'm mixing a little bit of blue with white. going to want the top part a little bit lighter than the bottom just to show where the light might be showing through the water. All right, so you're going to keep working and you're going to make the whole background covered in blue. And while acrylics are still wet, you can work in other colors. Um, if you wanted a little more white in the top, if you wanted to add some black or brown in the bottom, you could add in those colors while they are wet, but once acrylics dry, you'll be painting on top. You won't be able to mix anymore, like with oils. And again, if it's not mixing well, just get your brush a little bit wet and it will blend right in. And so I'm just gonna be working up a little bit to help it look more um, like a gradient. I want my darkest colors at the bottom. And I will be painting on top of this. So I'll have to wait for it to dry before I can do my next layer. But acrylics dry really fast. And again, once it starts pulling again, I'm gonna get my brush wet. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just brush in really lightly where we want our coral to go. So I'm just gonna have mine kind of going in and I drew myself a little sketch of, I mean guys, really, this is how I start. So you say, oh, how do you get there? Well, you start with something really crazy looking. So I just go in and I'm just going to lightly brush in where I think I want my coral to go. And I'm just using red for this. I know you can't see it that well at this point but I want it to just sort of be on there so I can tell where I want it to be.
So I have just a little bit of coral in the background, and so I think I like how this is looking. I'm gonna add just a little bit of white, just a, just a dab of white on my paintbrush so that I can add in some highlights where I think the might might, where I think the light would be coming in from the top. So just on the tops, I'm just gonna touch and just get a little bit of white on some of these areas as if the light were coming down on top of it. And it does not have to be exact or perfect. We're just getting an, an impression of it. And that's like with anything in art, you wanna give the feeling of it. So we're just adding in just a little bit of lights So I've just given just a little bit of highlight to this and I'm hoping you guys can see this well and um, we're gonna add in on top of this just a little bit of seagrass all right so next we're gonna add in some seagrass just a little bit of it to show in the front um, anytime I you make excuse me anytime that I uh, paint in grass of any kind I use a um, an angled diagonal paintbrush like this one you can use a big one or a small one. You'll see the difference in the size of the blade of grass that you make. So I'm just going to start with using some green. And you'll see how simple it is to put in some grass. You just start at the bottom and come on up. And so you're just going to make this motion. And um, you're going to be able to see and I'll zoom in in just a little bit so you can see better. I'll show you an up close shot. I want my blades of grass to be a little thicker because if the coral's that big, the grass might be a little bit thicker too. And again, same thing with the green. I'm gonna start in by just blocking in this color, but I'm gonna go back and add some highlights to it where the light would be hitting. And I'm not quite sure if my red is fully dry on my coral, so I'm not going to go on top of it at this point. I would not want to mess that up. And you'll see that if you kind of twist your paintbrush, you'll get a different effect. You can start thicker and see what it does. You can make the blades of grass cross over each other or not. And so I just have a little bit of grass in the background at this point. So same thing, I don't have to wait for the green to dry with this. And instead of using white at this point, I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow. And the yellow, as it comes down, will also give the effect of light hitting and the grass being lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. All 
with my, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and pick up just a little bit of brown on my brush. I'm not even gonna rinse it because all these colors are gonna look really nice mixed together. And just mix a little bit of ground, brown with the green so I can go ahead and darken up the bottoms of those blades of grass. And I just sort of, just touch it. Just touch it and pull up with the brown, the brown green mixture. And you will get a shadow that gives your grass a much more real um, color to it. People think of grass as just being green and it's not. Not seagrass, not grass that you see outside. At the very end of my paintings is really when I go in and add a lot of my very dark darks and my bright whites, but I'm happy with it at this point. I like that, I'm, I'm liking how this is looking. So next I'm gonna put some, just some fun bubbles in the background. So I'm gonna use white for this, white and maybe that fun turquoise color that I got out thinking I would wanna use in this painting. So, for our bubbles, I think I'm going to use just this shape brush. Don't even know what you call it. I've been painting for years. I do want my brush to be nice and wet so that this is a smooth circle. So I'm just going to be adding some circles and then doing some fun effects to those in just a minute. different sizes. They don't have to be perfect circles. Some larger, some smaller. And I know my seahorse is going to go somewhere right here in the middle or just off center. So I kind of skip over that area because I know it's going to be filled in with something else. So this is gonna be a really fun, whimsical piece. All right, so go ahead and if you need to take a break, if you need to rinse some brushes, take care of that and we'll keep on going. All right, now it's time for that fun turquoise color. So I'm gonna use a little bit of it and I'm gonna be painting it on the bottom side of the circles of the bubbles. So we're just gonna add in a little bit of that darker color And again, these are just the details that make it fun. So, you know, if you leave these parts out, everything's still going to look good. And uh, I just like there to be some extra details in the painting. Makes it more interesting to look at. And if you go over your white lines, that's fine. We'll go back and touch them up at the end. So those look pretty good to me. I'm gonna go back to doing a little bit of white. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a highlight toward the top, just a little, just a little like upside down C, a little arc.
All right, so even without those details, it would already have looked like a bubble. So you can add as many little details. When you look at a water droplet, when you really study it, you'll notice that there are lots of high, uh, highlights and lots of lowlights. Uh, and that is what makes you a better artist, is really studying what you're looking at and really painting or drawing what you're seeing. So don't think of a, a tree as just brown and green. Uh, don't think of water as just blue. So you really have to look and see what colors are actually there. Okay, so next we are going to start our seahorse. And please remember, when you watch me paint, I'm going to mess up a lot. And that's okay, I just keep going. You're not If you mess up in art, it's really not a mess up. You're just learning. And so I have painted and repainted things, and it's just important to not give up. Stay positive. If it doesn't look like you wanted it to look, just think of it you know, as being a step along the journey to where you're going and um, keep working with it. Don't give up on it. I have a lot of paintings sitting in the timeout area because I'm just not happy with where they're at. So nobody gets to see those until they are out of timeout, but um, they just have to face the wall for a while until I can get back to working with them. So I'm going to have my seahorse be orange, orange and maybe a little bit of yellow. So, um, this is going to be the hardest part for me. So we're going to get through this together and um, just put this seahorse on here. I'm going to use this size brush, little slanted, um, smaller size brush. And I do want it to be a little bit wet. Work a little bit of orange on. I'm just going to get an, an outline first because it's one of the things that makes me most nervous in painting is when I want it some, want something to look perfect. Um, it's it's a challenge and it takes work and it takes time. So just be patient with yourself. I have to be patient with myself and um, just keep working the outline till you get it exactly where you want. Start smaller and then get bigger because if you start bigger, it's a lot harder to fix your background um, than if you would you know start with a smaller outline. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start by trying to get where I want the head to be. And I know I want the head to be somewhere in here. So I'm just gonna block in with a little bit of orange. So I know I want the head to be facing down somewhat. And I don't want the, the acrylic to dry in like globs on the painting. So if you see that you've left a glob, just kind of smooth it out. All right. So they kind of have a, a cheek on them. So I'm going to let that kind of come down a little bit. And they kind of have this ear. I don't know. It looks like an ear to me. And then it's going to come out. They have a, a skinny neck way up top. It's real skinny up in here. gets very round in the belly. And again, I'm just blocking in color at this point. No details yet. It doesn't have to look real. It doesn't have to look right just getting the idea for it. I call it the ugly stage. A lot of times that's when somebody walks in the room and sees you painting and they're like, oh, it looks great. And you say, it's the ugly stage. I'm not there yet. I have to put the finishing touches on it. And their back sort of curves inward at the same place where it goes out in the front. getting it. Now 
And all I did beforehand was I looked at a couple of pictures of seahorses on my computer and sketched them out in my, in my notebook that I had lay in here, just so I could kind of get the feel for the curve of the body. So after his back comes in, I want to kind of curve a little more up here. And I do know that he has a, a snout that's going to come out in just a little bit. I was just going to work the other areas first. All right, so now he's got this very long curly tail that's going to come down. It's going to come down first. And then it's going to end up probably somewhere right here. just blocking in where I want it to be. Smoothing out that paint so I don't have blobs that dry. I'm paying attention to what parts on his body look thicker and thinner. Go ahead and try to add in that snout that he has. to be careful about the side of your hand. As you can tell, I'm already getting paint on my hand and if I lay it in the wrong spot, it's gonna go ahead and like move your paint around and give you some spots. I have just a few that I've, that I've done, but I can touch those up at the end. Sometimes you kind of have to just take a step back, look at it for a second, see where your errors are, see where it doesn't quite look right. I can tell mine needs to put on a little weight. He's looking a little skinny like this. So it's not perfect, but I'm liking where it's going. Again, I'm paying attention to where I can tell that it's uneven, adding in more paint to make it an even tone, and trying to pay attention to where I think the tail obviously needs to be thicker in here and stay thin at the end. I don't want the end to get any thicker here. I just want to give it an even tone of this orange paint. 
but do you want it to come and get a little thicker as it gets closer to the body? And it's important to take your time with this. make sure you have enough paint on your brush to do what you're trying to do. Okay, so I'm not quite happy with his head shape yet. There's something going on with the shape of his head that I'm not quite sure what I've done. But is looking okay. You can definitely tell what it is. So there's the first milestone. We have somewhat of a seahorse. So while I have all my other colors still nice and fresh in front of me, I'm going to touch up some of those little spots on the blue that I accidentally got some of my other colors on. So if you have your paints still right there, those other colors that are still wet, Go ahead and take that opportunity to pick up that color and just, oh, that was a little too dark, and work in, um, work back in what color it was supposed to be. I mean, it's pretty simple. You just, just touch where you see that you accidentally got another color, and it looks nice. I know my bubbles are also dry at this point, so I can go back and touch up the whites that I accidentally got a little too much turquoise on. So we have to make some decisions about the color of our seahorse body at this point. I know I want to use yellow as my highlight color to mix with my orange, and then obviously white also on top of that. And I think I'll mix a little bit of brown with the orange to give the, the shadow parts of his body a little more depth. So I'm going to start with the lighter color, I'm going to mix a little bit of orange with yellow. Go ahead and start working on some highlights and low lights, and that'll help me kind of figure out what else needs to change with the shape of his body. So I know again that the light's coming in from the top, so I want to just lighten up the whole top part of his body where the sun would be coming in. Still smoothing out any blobs that form. And the top of the belly will get a little bit of a, a highlight here. Along his back where it curves back out. I think I'd like it to be a little lighter still. And on the tail also. Make sure you look at all parts of the body. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to rinse my brush. I like this size brush that I'm using, so I'm going to rinse it off and mix a little bit of the orange with brown, or I should say just a tiny little bit of brown because brown is so dark. I just need to mix a tiny little bit of it with the orange to get my low light color. 
my shadow color. I don't want it to be too dark. This is a, I already have a lot of dark colors going on in this painting, a lot of bold colors. So I want it to still look orange, just like a darker orange. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use it on the shadowy parts of where the light would not be hitting, but instead casting a shadow. I've already, I'm already liking what I'm seeing. It's already looking a lot more realistic. And I'm, my goal is not to make this look perfect. Well, my goal is simply to give the idea of a fun under the sea, sea creature painting. So it is truly for fun. And um, I just want it to be bold and happy. Some paintings want to be as close to real life as possible or as real to a photograph as possible. This is not that. This is going to be a fun, bold pop of color that just makes you think of the ocean and um, all the beautiful creatures that live in it. So take a moment, rinse brushes, get a drink, be back in a minute. All right, so now we're going to add a few more details to our seahorse. I'm going to use that light color of orange and yellow. And I'm going to give him a little bit of spikes down his spine. And this is just going to give him a little bit more detail. tell that as I go further down I need to darken them up a little bit. And I like how this looks. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and give him all the way down his tail. And again, I have to remember, have enough paint on my brush to get done what I'd like to get done. A lot of times we're trying to paint a painting and there's no paint left on our paintbrush. Now that I'm getting back into an area that I highlighted, I'm going to use a lighter color. All right, it's looking good. Very good. I am just going to highlight a little more up here. I like that lighter color. And as your paint dries, you can build on top with acrylics. Yeah, this is looking good. All right, so my seahorse really needs an eye. It'll help me kind of to see the shape of his face. Some. Uh, when painting a seahorse, give a really small head compared to the size of the body. Some make it a little bit more even. So for the eye, I am going to use this small brush. So with, with my body and head, I'm no seahorse expert. I just like them. So I painted it the way that I imagined it and um, based on looking at a couple of pictures on the internet. So for his eye, 
I'm going to start with um, black. I put white on my paintbrush thinking of another animal's eye, but really I'm going to use just a little bit of black and it's going to be um, toward the top of his head, right about here. So this is obviously not perfect right at once, but I'm gonna work on it. I'm just gonna block in. I want him to have a big eye. I want him to be a happy, want him to be a happy seahorse. All right. Okay, so I am gonna work on his snout just a little bit. I can tell that on a seahorse snout, it goes down and gets just a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna work on that. I haven't done that to my painting yet, so I'm just going to use a little bit of orange. And this is a very slow, detailed part. And that's immediately helping a lot. So that is looking good. So back to the eye. I just put a black circle for the eye. I'm going to add in a little white dot in the middle. Or maybe a little white circle. Let's see. Yeah, so I kind of just did like a little backwards C. I mean, I wish you could see this just a little bit better. But I will... Uh, offer you some zoomed in uh, pictures right at the end. All right, so I do need to add some highlights still with white on my seahorse. If everything else has white highlights on it, the seahorse definitely does too. So I'm going to add in with a nice wet brush and white paint. I'm going to kind of give him some I'm just going to very faintly lay these on top here. That just added so much, being able to see that. All right. And so already, just by looking at um, my red coral, I think it needs some more um, highlights to it and low lights. So I kind of jump around when I paint. I do a little seahorse, a little coral, a little back to the water, and um, everybody has their own style. That is just the way I like to do it. So I'm just going to add in a little more, kind of just giving it some veining. Everybody's different. You do it how you like it. That's the beauty of art. Nobody has to be the same. Also, when I go ahead and while I'm thinking of the coral, I'm going to add in the low lights. So I'm going to mix red with my brown. Raw umber is the, the name of the brown that I like to use. And you'll notice some of your paints dry. We've only been painting one hour and uh, my paints are starting to dry on my palette. So you can use a wet paper towel and lay a wet paper towel over your paints if you have to get up and walk away. Um, that's one trick to to help. So I got to be careful. I just um, ran my paint through where the white was and you got to be careful when you're working right next to some wet paint not to mix into it. But when you do these highlights and lowlights guys you're going to notice just an immediate transformation. Low light 
lights where I know the sun or the light that's coming in would not be touching. And I always make sure I paint all the way to the edge of the canvas. It's hard to go back and match colors if you didn't paint to the edge. some of that brown just do a few touches of just brown on my seahorse in the areas that I know that would be darker so like right along here I know would have a dark dark shadow I'm going to add in that dark brown That's looking good. On the underside of the jaw, the head. Oh, it's looking very nice. Oh, I just dipped my paintbrush in red. I'm not working with red. So this is a really cute little painting and just like I did the highlights um, of white on the body, I am going to do that right beside it. Again, with a wet brush and just a little bit of paint on it, I'm just going to come right under the white and do a brown. And that just gives it depth. Where there's light, there is shadow. So we have to pay attention to that. Very nice. I'm just going to use that a little bit to shade in right in here. Very, very nice. All right. I do think I want to put just a few more blades of grass, maybe smaller ones this time. I used a bigger brush last time. I'll use a smaller brush this time. And I'm going to go ahead and just mix yellow and green because I want them to be a little bit lighter in color. and bright. And now that I know my coral is dry, I can make them cut in front of the coral. Once you start layering things on top of each other, it really gives it a more finished look. I have just a few tall ones. I like this. 
I like there to be balance, but not symmetry. I don't want it to be perfect, but I want it to be balanced. And I really like how this has turned out. I need just a little bit more white. I can tell right here on the top. I didn't really highlight this part very well. And that would definitely have some light coming down on it. And other than that, I think this guy has a really good look to him. I might, not yet, almost called him finished, but I don't think he's finished. I like to, even though my grass is highlighted and low lighted, I like to have a little bit of whites. Just a little. This doesn't have to be perfect, you're just giving the impression. I've done this very large scale, and I've done this very small scale, and it always works to give a good grass look in my style of painting. You can use browns when you do grass. 